Writing is tough. It, it's, it's time spent bleeding at your keyboard. Well, metaphorically, obviously. Time when lights are off, when nobody's around you, when distractions need to be put away, when nobody's paying attention. It's something that you need to spend constant hours doing consistently and putting together all these words that you've written, sometimes, often, hundreds of thousands of them, even then they may not turn into a book because maybe the writing isn't even any good. As a job, as a hobby, writing is incredibly difficult. And it's even more difficult if you can't do the one thing that ensures you have a leg up on everyone else. And that's actually finding time to write. This was something I struggled with for multiple years uh, in my writing journey. I discovered a love for writing in college, taking that creative writing class that I'm sure many of you have taken as well. And I, it felt like it opened up a whole new world and all of a sudden, I loved writing. But the problem was, I wasn't actually finishing anything and getting any better because I wasn't actually writing. And it was the most difficult thing that I've had to overcome in order to help me grow as a writer consistently. So how do you do it? How do you write consistently? How do you set a schedule that you'll actually adhere to? Do you have to get up at three in the morning? Do you have to do it late at night when all the lights are off and it's dark outside and you're just tired and wanna to go to bed? Yeah, I'm gonna show you a couple different things that you can do practically to actually help get you on your way towards writing consistently, to building your writing habit, which if you don't build the habit, I hate to break it to you, you're never gonna publish anything. So here are the problems. These were the problems that I was having consistently and they might be something that you're struggling with as well. Number one, I was not writing consistently enough. I might get 7,000 words in a month, which sounds pretty decent, but if you add it all up, that's not really getting towards a published novel. I need rhythm and it's like the old adage about the snowball. Once it gets momentum, it starts rolling down the hill and becomes unstoppable. And I feel like writing is very much that way. I need for me personally to get to a rhythm, to get to a routine, a habit. And if I build that habit, I will get the words necessary to publish a novel, publish two novels, publish three, and then hopefully by the end of those experiments, maybe even if I don't get them published, hey, maybe I've done enough that I'm now a good writer objectively. So I wasn't writing consistently enough and I was getting distracted when I was writing. Sure, we've all got cell phones that you know, are wonderful, but when it comes time to actually settle down and do the things we need to do, we find ourselves scrolling Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. If you're watching this video and you should be writing, uh, go write, leave, leave me be. I'll be here later, you can come back and watch it. So I had a come to Jesus moment. I was not writing consistently enough, maybe two times a week or I'd have a week on and then like a week and a half off and it was there was no rhythm to it. There was no rhyme to it and even when I was writing, I was getting distracted. I didn't have a habit. So how have I been able to build a writing habit where I can consistently write between 15 and 20,000 words a month, which I'm not gonna claim is amazing, but you know, and I'm sure there's others that write so much more than that, but 15 to 20,000 words is a 100,000 word novel in a year. It's actually 100,000 in seven months. So ignore that, it's a lot. It, it adds up, it's the snowball thing that I was talking about. You know the snowball, it's that. Just, you know, don't worry about the math. If you do, it makes sense if you don't think about it. So what I did was I evaluated writing's place in my life. Where did my writing time fit into my day? Obviously I have priorities. I've got a job that I have to actually do work at. I have, I'm married, I have a wife that loves me and I love her and we need to spend time together and we need to foster that relationship and I have friends and I have family and I like to read and I like to play video games and I like to watch YouTube videos. You see where this is going. Time goes by quick and you have to evaluate where writing fits into your day and how important it is to you. 
because if you don't, time will go by and you'll look up and realize, I haven't written in three days. Why is that? It's because I haven't prioritized it. You've gotta create a place and time that are only for writing. Like I said before, if you don't prioritize it, you're gonna look up and all of a sudden, all your time's gone and you haven't written anything. You've gotta create a space for your brain that says, this is writing time. This is not video game time, this is not reading time, this is not work time, this is just for writing and this is just for me. So what I did was I created a place in our home that is only for writing. In fact, for me, it's just a desk. It's this one desk that I don't do any other projects at. I don't uh, create graphics or video or I don't even edit these videos at this desk. It is only for writing and only writing gets done there. As well, I also set aside a time in the day that I only am allowed to write. I don't do anything else. Usually it's dark, usually nobody's awake, uh, nobody's texting me, there's no reasonable distractions. So I set my, set my alarm for five, I get up, I go to my writing desk and I write. And my brain knows it's trained through habit that I can only write here, I can't do anything else. An add on to that is, I think the only way you can really write effectively, to create the habit effectively, is to control your environment. I can't control my own impulses. If my phone's near me, I'm inevitably gonna get on it. If the TV is close, if my Xbox is close, I'm gonna play Xbox. I, I'm gonna invent a reason to stay in bed. I'm gonna invent a reason to read a book. But if I can control my environment, and create the place where writing is done, where there's no excuse but to write, I will do it. For example, you know, you hear stories and adages about so many authors that have a entirely separate home or a hotel room, place that is only for their writing, and they get writing done because they can't even do anything else. I was reading something about Toni Morrison the other day where she would rent a hotel room and go to that hotel and she would write for eight hours. And then she would come home and make dinner for her husband and spend time with him and go about the rest of her night. But she had that room that had nothing in it. It had water and some food and that was it. And she would sit in front of the window and she would write. There was nothing else for her to do and therefore she was able to write to her quota every single day. It's about creating the environment where is only writing. There's nothing else that can distract you, that can hinder you, that can take away that habit that you're trying to form. You have to treat yourself like you're a newborn almost and that you're going to naturally do everything that you don't want to do. So you have to create boundaries for yourself that will force you to do exactly what you know you need to be doing. In this case, writing. For me, I recognized for myself that writing was irreplaceable. I'd be grumpy if I wasn't getting my words in. I would feel the draw into the story that I was telling. I would be thinking about it when I was in other places, at other times, doing other things, and I knew I had to be writing. If, if I wasn't consistently getting the words out, it felt like something was off, like something was missing. There was a part of me that wasn't getting filled. And so I knew that writing was something I had to prioritize in my life. And for a couple years, I didn't. I, beat around the bush. I wrote only a couple thousand words a month, never really got anywhere. And the worst part is I wasn't improving because I wasn't finishing stories that I could get feedback on that then would allow me to improve. So I set my writing routine of waking up at five in the morning, making my coffee and writing for two hours every day before I went to work. Thankfully, I have a wonderful wife that holds me accountable to waking up that early in the morning. Believe it or not, I did not always do this. In fact, I think before I got married, it was very commonplace for me to be waking up at 7.45, rolling out of bed, taking a shower and going to work, and not getting anything done. This also allowed me to read more, which is, I think, another key as a writer in improving as a writer. You've got to read as well as write. And that takes up time to actually finish reading as well as getting your words in. And maybe you do an every other day sort of deal where you read one day and you write the next or vice versa, or, you know, however way it works for you, because there's no really one way to do this thing. 
You've just got to figure out what works for you, prioritize it in your life, and create a place and time where you only do that thing. I hope this has been helpful for you as you are creating that daily writing habit that's going to take you from middling writer to somebody who could potentially go pro at this and do this thing as a job. That's you know what we all aspire to do and it's something that I'm working towards and I'm not there yet, but I think that I've created a daily writing habit. I will eventually get there because I will finish stories uh, finish novels and eventually get to a point where I will be commercially successful. Let me know if you have a daily writing habit, what your habit is and how it looks like in your life and what you had to do in order to set up that habit for yourself. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.